Um, they say three is ideal to ensure decisions are never caught in a tie. One says yes, one says no. What are you going to do? The third person will be the X Factor judge that makes it or breaks your career. Um, it's not a numbers game. It's it's but it's not a numbers game. It's who those co-founders are and how you work together. So sure, you have three co-founders, um, but only two are contributing and one isn't. So there's no point in having the third if he's just gonna waste space and time. Solo founders take 3.6 times longer to reach the scale stage compared to a founding team member of two. It's a no-brainer as well. The more people working on it, the faster you can achieve your goals. So the ideal team DNA, this is based on three people, is to have the business product, um, someone to product to manage the product, and then the technology of the product. So if we take, for example, Apple, um, I think I use this in an example later on as well. So the business is Apple, the product management, or like the vision person was Steve Jobs, and then the other one was um, the other Steve. No, sorry, the other way around. Steve Jobs was the technology guy, the vision guy, and then the other Steve was in the product management, so he was getting it in front of people that made it as popular as it is today. So that's an ideal team DNA. So how to find the perfect co-founder. You need to be prepared for a lengthy and rocky, rocky journey. Remove the word fear from your vocabulary. I don't want to hear that word anymore if you do use it, because if you don't try, you're never going to know and you're going to wonder what if. So what's the worst that could happen? Someone says no to you, or if you do join on with these people, it doesn't work out. Um, I go to that as well. You need to divorce them. Um, so you need to stop talking about it and start doing it. So when I asked who's already got a startup, only two people put their hands up. Um, I'm not sure whether everyone's, you know, for whatever different reasons, if you want to have a startup in the future or if you want to get some information, but stop talking about it and just start doing it. There's no better time than now. And don't be afraid of failure. You need to turn them into lessons, learn from them. Um, you can also educate other people or learn from other people's mistakes as well and you have to stay open-minded if someone um, ticks off all the boxes that you want like for example they have they just had a baby and you can't really for you you haven't had a baby so you could really understand that their roster is pretty jam-packed with baby related stuff so you need to be able to work around that if you think they're perfect for you so just understand where they're coming from as well and I'm very kind of a hippie. I think that everything happens for a reason. If you put it into existence, it will happen. So start putting your, your idea and your product into existence and the universe works in wonderful ways if you believe that. Okay, so the dating period. A lot of the time people say that co-founders is um, compared to a marriage and you wouldn't marry someone that you didn't know. Maybe you would the bachelor, whatever. <laughs> or you may, um, if you date them for a week, they may be different to who they are in a year. So we call this the dating period, um, getting to know your lover before you marry them. So become friends first. So date your potential co-founder before you marry him or her. You will be spending more time with them than your actual spouse, which is true, because when you're at work, you're spending more time with your co-workers than when you go home for that two or three hours before you have dinner, they go to bed. Um, so you need to be able to trust them with your life, with your money, with your idea, with your everything. Experience them at their worst and don't get caught up in the infatuation of co-founder lust. If you're a drinker, go see how they are when they're drunk because that's when the true personalities come out. Um, go on a mini vacation with them, that's where it really makes or breaks relationships, whether it's co-founding or love life. Um, Put them in situations where they, their anger or their um, violence is tested so you can see how they're going to react to situations if they were to happen um, during the co-founding experience with each other. And seek out their passion for the business or it will fizzle out quickly. If you're kind of forcing the idea on them, they're going to get bored of it pretty quickly. So you want to make sure that that person shares the same passion for that idea or product that you have as well. 
So avoid gravitating towards someone who is like you and lean more towards someone who is different. We say that because if you're two of the exact same people, you like the same things, dress the same, look the same, all that kind of stuff, you're not going to have a different um, viewpoint if you're having a problem. You're both going to think the same way to solve it instead of having different angles on it. Bear in mind that the annoying person will bring you diversity and strength to your team. Don't be too different though, or you'll spend most of your time arguing with that person instead of actually solving problems. So a good quote is, make sure that the people around you don't think, look and act like you, because you want them to ask different questions. Um, continuing on becoming friends first, learn everything about them before it's too late. What makes them tick? What makes them stress? What makes them happy? How do they treat others? How does she respond to tough situations? How do they balance work life? How does he treat others? Do they like puppies? Are they <laughs> gluten free? Just stuff like that that's going to make you <laughs> life difficult. Um, so align your values and visions and that, this will also help create your company's culture. So another good quote I've put in here is determine uh, Determine and partner with people who share your values. It's easy to learn new skills, but it's hard to change someone's character, if it's possible at all. Um, with, these, with the slides that I'm going through, it's often related to your everyday love life as well, so you can, I put them in a, a memorable way like this so that you can kind of relate to it better and remember it down the track. So wear your heart on your sleeve. Talk about it. It's more than the idea, execution is key. A lot of people like to keep their idea or their project really close to their heart. Like They don't want to tell anyone what's happening because they don't want anyone to steal their idea. But a lot of the time, it's not even about the idea. There's so many copycat, um, just guys can just get your product up, your idea up just like that. But it's the person who's driving it and kind of your your angle that you take. You know, for example, we have normal taxes and then we have Uber. Uber is the cool way to catch a cab, I guess. Um, but it's, it's the way they've worked it into a lifestyle instead of just a product, just a boring product. So get feedback on your idea to see if it's going to work. You've asked your mum, your dad, your sister, do you think this is cool? But maybe that's not the type of audience that you're looking for. If you're doing a clothing brand for kids, you're not going to ask your bus driver who has no kids in his house anymore. Or maybe he's the granddad, but you want to ask the mums that are buying the products. So make sure you're asking those questions to people that are going to be your consumers. And avoid time alone. Surround yourself with creatives because you can't brainstorm with yourself as effectively as you could with a group of people. Um, what matters is not ideas, but the people who have them. Good people can fix bad ideas, but good ideas can't save bad people. I know it's becoming repetitive network, 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 but it's so important, especially if you're trying to find a co-founder. Um, attend conferences, start up meetings, workshops, even at your family groups. There's always, if someone brings a friend, you what do you do, what do you do? Have business cards? Have lots of business cards, they're so cheap. Give them to everyone, anyone you see, on the bus, whatever, on the train, give them your business cards. Go to the places you would want to meet with your co-founder. You wouldn't go to a strip club to meet your co-founder. That's not what kind of guy you want around you. So go to events like this. This is a good place to meet co-founders. Meet up with as many people as you can. Tell as many people as you can. Whoever will listen, tell them. Practice your pitch on your dog. Practice your pitch in the mirror. Practice, practice, practice your pitches. You only have one chance to sell your idea. Once you've lost their interest, there's no really turning back. Search within your own network. Reach out to your media circle. Um, this could be colleagues if, if you guys have jobs. Okay, you obviously have jobs outside of this. So at your workplaces or even at uni, cafeteria, anything like that. Um, that's a media circle if you know them. And then you can also tap into their network. So they might know someone. Hey, do you know this person interested in this? Blah, blah, blah. You can get, um, find someone like that. A family, friend or ex-colleague is an ideal situation, mainly because you already know that person, so your trust is already built. Um, I've got 12 brothers and sisters, so anytime I have an idea, I'm like, you're doing this, you're doing that. So it's good that I just trust them and I can argue with them but still be peaceful at the end because they're blood. Um, 
so it's kind of like Tinder, but for co-founders. So these matchmaking tools, um, put them into good use. So you might want to jot these down. Um, founder dating, tech co-founder, founder to be, and tech venture. There's a lot more, but these are kind of the most popular ones. Yeah, so you can, some of them are good. They have, um, so you can either become a co-founder or you can pitch your ideas so that you can become someone's co-founder. Get cyber social. We're all about the internet these days, so make up a profile on LinkedIn if you don't have one. Start connecting with people. The great thing about LinkedIn is they have their titles there, so if you want to be involved with um, promoting your product to, there's a trade show on today in Perth, and if you're, you sell tools, you want to get in touch with the person of the expo to start getting marketing and that kind of stuff all put together, so you can search whatever you want. You guys have used LinkedIn before, yeah? So you know how it works, yeah, cool. So just start connecting on there. Sometimes it gets a bit spammy. Um, just be careful. Of if anything sounds too good to be true, it's usually not true. I'm not real life. <laughs> Tweet away. Um, I'm searching for a co-founder, blah, blah, blah. Put a status on Facebook. Do it for the gram. Put up a post on Instagram. Jump on job boards. Pedestrian TV, if you guys heard of that, they have a good job board for creative stuff as opposed to seek is more Monday white collar stuff. And send out an email to your contact list. So I'm sure over the few years, or a lot of years that we've had the internet, um, your emails, contacts have started piling up. Spam them. Spam your friends, spam your family, ask them if they know anyone. <laughs> Speak with your mentors. Does anyone have any mentors? No. Yeah. How often do you catch up with them? Once a month. Okay, that's good. So get advice from those who have paved the road in entrepreneurship. So they, if they're in the same field, are they in the same field as what you want to do? Or? Yeah, which is now part of like this board of CEOs or whatever. Okay, well, that's cool, yeah. So you want to ask people that have kind of experience in your field or um, if, they, if they don't have, if you're doing, some guy was just doing renewable energy, if they don't have experience in that, you could ask them for experience in like the marketing or the business side of stuff. So there's always ways you can take advantage of that. Always, always seek feedback. Don't be afraid to ask the dumb questions because those dumb questions end up being really good ones and sometimes you might even stop them. It's like, oh, I haven't thought of that before. So you may even teach them something. Ask for introductions to people that would be relevant or beneficial for you. So find a co-working space like this. This is a co-working space. I would call this a co-working space. Um, interact with fellow entrepreneurs who share the same goals and aspirations as you. Brainstorm with fellow creatives and new ideas and ventures often form from these collaborations of minds. So you may be pitching to each other your ideas, but then boom, you guys think of a way to join them together and make an even bigger force than what you were going to in the beginning. The proposal. So now you've dated that person, you're kind of happy with them. So now you need to know what you want. So you make a list of what you want from your ideal partner. I know a lot of, when I was younger, a lot of my girlfriends would do this, should I break up with him? What are his pros and what are his cons? So it's kind of the same thing. So you want to include skills and personality traits though. Um, so you don't need to do this now, but when you get home or when you have time, I want you to make a list of your qualities and weaknesses and be honest. You should be your number one fan, but you should also be honest with yourself as well. Don't try to be the jack of all trades. It just ends up messy. Myself, I've only learned how to delegate maybe two years ago, and I've been able to go places faster now that I've learned how to delegate. It's hard because you know that you can do the job best, so you don't want to give that away, but you need to learn to do that. You know, sometimes it fails, but yeah. Um, Compare the list and use it as a focal point to begin your search. So whatever you're missing, find that in your co-founder. If you're the tech person, find someone that's really businessy savvy that can push your product. Ensure that the skill sets are complementary and not redundant. That's another thing why you don't want to find the same person as you. You want to be able to complement each other. And you need to find someone that's compatible with your business and yourself as a person. 
So has anyone taken that? This is a really good one. Um, 16personalities.com. It's okay to be polar opposites as long as you can still work together. So you just need to respect each other's ideas. If someone gives you an idea, just don't shut it down immediately. Have a listen. You can shut it down later, but don't do it immediately. Let them have their say because you want to encourage um, you want to encourage them to contribute to further discussions and that kind of stuff. Make sure people. Yeah, I already wrote that one, didn't I? Um, yeah, I've really, I've doubled in that quote. Ignore. Um, you want to find someone with grit. Um, you need someone that can push through adversity. Just like I said in the beginning, it's a very rocky and hard journey. You want to find someone that isn't going to give up straight away. So Professor Carol Dweck of the Stanford Department of Psychology has done extensive research on the subject of grit. She defines grit as the disposition to pursue very long-term goals with passion and perseverance. Stamina and the ability to win over things over the long term and work very hard at it. So if you have someone that isn't keen to stand through all that adversity, you might as well get rid of them in the beginning. It's just wasting your time. Research has found the prime factor to grit is having the right mindset. So there's two main mindsets that we have. One is called the fixed mindset. I don't know if you can really see it, but I can't really see it either. Um, okay, so in the fixed mindset, People avoid challenges. They give up easily when there's obstacles. Oh, no, really yeah. <laughs> How do I zoom up? you an idea, don't shut them down straight away, because um, you'll be a fixed mind person and we want to be open-minded. Criticism, yeah, we just did that one. Success of others, they feel threatened by the success of others. This happens a lot in business. People start getting jealous. Um, stay away from those people. Okay, so an open mindset, which is what you want to find. Um, you should also be this yourself. You embrace challenges, you're persistent in the face of setbacks, you see effort as the path to mastery, you learn from criticism or mistakes, and the last one is you find lessons and inspiration in the success of others instead of hating on them. So they're the two mindsets you have. Um, a lot of people generally like cross, they have a bit of both, but it's obviously better to be open. You need to consider your potential co-founder's financial situation. This will determine the time and effort they can contribute to the project. If they have very little debt and financial commitment, this is ideal. Financial equipment could be outside of business, house, car, children, child support, injuries, medicals, that kind of stuff. Is there enough savings to quit their job? Is there enough savings for you to quit your job? Will paying the bills deter focus? If they do have those debts, um, they do have the bills, where's the money going to come from? Essentially, it won't give you so much. So you need to make sure if they still need to work, that it's not going to affect the focus on the project that you guys are doing. If they aren't contributing funds, how much time can they give? So if you're going to be giving the money, maybe they can put in more time than you are. So look, for red, look out for red flags. Integrity is key. If you've heard about their bad reputation, stay clear. You don't want to be one of those people that, oh, I can change them. He'll change for me. <coughs> no, <laughs> he's never going to change. They have a bad reputation. You don't want to risk it, so just stay away from that. Check their background. The internet is everything these days. You can stalk anyone. So Google them, Facebook search them, check them out on cofoundhim.com. I'll make that up. Trust your instincts. 
some characteristics to avoid are if they, if they have really bad communication, if there's nothing worse than someone not replying to your text or emails, calls, or when you text them and you see the three dots and then they disappear and then they don't message you back and you're like, you just had your phone, why are you not texting me back? So just avoid lack of communication. If they're always blaming someone else for things that they could have prevented, oh, but it was this guy's fault, blah, 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 avoid them. If they're really defensive, if you give them feedback, or if you're like, why didn't you call me back? And they're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Aggressive independence, if they want to do everything on their own, avoid that. Inconsistent productivity. So one week they're really good and they're helping you out heaps, but then the next week there was a festival on, so they didn't do any work at all, and they wanted to get drunk and party, so they didn't do any work. You want someone that's going to be consistent along the way. So the prenup. So now you're proposed. So the prenup on how the rest of your life is going to pan out. So agree on a strategy. Allocate roles and responsibilities. Who's doing what? How often are you doing it? Agree on the level of commitment for each co-founder. How many hours will you dedicate a week? How will you share the costs and the profits? If you're putting in more money, you should be getting more profits, generally speaking. What are your goals and milestones you hope to achieve? Do you want to bring on three full-time employees? Do you want to get an office? You all these little nitty-gritties you need to sort out and set dates. If you don't set dates, it's just going to be up in the end. It's never going to happen. If you set your goals, write them down. I think we all did this in high school. You had to write down your goals. and I don't know if anyone's gone back to check on their goals before. But if you, if you write it down and you put it into existence, it's more likely going to happen than if you were just to write it down. Uh, when will you quit full-time work? So when you're, s essentially everyone's dream is when they have a startup is to quit their full-time work, but you can't because you have the bills. So you need to plan, when are we going to make this much money so that we both can quit? Or I'll quit first because you need more money, you have children, blah, blah, blah. So again, financial commitments, you need to look at that as well. And they need to be compatible with each other and within the business as well. These Questions like this, some people um, get really pushy and some people may reserve themselves as well and they might even pull out of the project. So make sure it's, it's a comfortable scene. It's not, um, just, even if it's at someone's house, it's probably more intimate than if you were in a coffee shop and there's lots of distractions and loud noises. Depends how you guys work together though, but make sure you just stay respectful of each other's wishes and um, what they can do because yeah, everyone's situation is different. So be clear on your company's vision. Where is the startup headed? Are you going to stay in Perth? Are you going to move to Sydney? Are you going to dream for New York, San Fran, any of that? You need to let each other know. How will the business evolve? What size do you want it to grow to? Just stay used to, used three, or do you want to bring in full-time employees? Um, do you want to train people up to come and work, do an apprenticeship with you guys? Is there an exit strategy? A lot of people would like to do the five-year strategy or the ten-year, so you need to put that in place. What steps are you going to take to be able to make that exit strategy happen? Keep the bigger picture in mind. Where will the company be in five years' time? Where will it be in ten years' time? Will you still be around? Are you still going to be going at it 100% or will it fizzle down? You need to put all of these into your mindset as well on paper and act on them. You need to encourage diversity, so get out of your own bubble and invite a different perspective on things. A variety of outlook allows for more creative ideas and solutions. One makes it, one sells it. So this is what I was talking about before, about Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Um, one's focus on the product development while the other drove it to the people. Have someone focus on the vision while the other is active with the nitty gritty details. So if you're not so good with people and talking to people and you're just happy to be the computer geek on the computer and just stay home and just concentrate on that, then do that while the other person is happy to go out and mingle with everyone, network, network, network. How do I calculate the equity splits? This topic is very touchy. Um, I know myself when we had this, there was a lot of <coughs> tears and tantrums, probably only tears for me because I was the only girl, but there was two other guys and they all kind of thought that because I was the girl they could bully me and this is recorded and they're going to hear this. <laughs> cool. Um, but so be clear on who owns what and how much. Um, I 
guess our mistake in the beginning was we were two of us were friends and another one was just like outside of coming in. He was really good at what he was doing, but we never we spoke verbally about who was getting what. But when it came down to drawing out the papers with the lawyers, and um, I was taken aback at how much they valued me. So kind of like had a halt there, but then we were able to talk through it. And communication is the massive key for everything. Um, I'm a very confronting person, so whenever something annoys me, I'll tell you straight away so that the issues are solved then and there. Is she? <laughs> is that why you're laughing? <laughs> it's cool. Um, so you need to consider the factors of whose idea it is, who's funding the project, what's the importance of their role, and are they taking a cash salary? So a lot of people, they don't want to do a non-cash equity split, so they just want... Um, sorry. So a cash salary is they get a, a smaller amount of equity, however they get a yearly salary. So that's another way you could propose a co-founder partnership like that, instead of just saying, you're working for me for free, if we sell you're getting this much. Um, the salary equity package usually attracts higher quality candidates, but don't get greedy. I know a few people, because I used to live in Sydney for a while in the startup scene there, there's a couple of people that didn't want investors to come in because they wanted to maintain 100% of their company. But 100% of nothing is worth nothing compared to 50% of something that's worth 10 million, for example. So don't get greedy. But don't be silly either and give away everything. So the honeymoon. How to keep co-founders happy and motivated. Keep dating them, but you need to be able to switch between the business partner hat and the friend hat. So if you're at their birthday party, don't bring up work. If you're at work, don't bring up their personal problems unless they bring it up, but you should kind of try and put a red tape between those two different issues. Um, continue to show their appreciation. Even if you are 50-50 partners, continue to show that you appreciate what they're doing. Take them to the movies, cook them dinner. Even if you burn the dinner, they're gonna appreciate your effort of you cooking them dinner. Make them feel valuable, stay transparent and collaborate. Um, it's very important to stay transparent. You don't want Chinese whispers, he's doing this, she's doing that, you don't want none of that. And lead by example. Treat them the way you want to be treated, it's a general life rule. The divorce. If all that doesn't work, you need to consider the divorce. A breakup between co-founders is one of the most common pitfalls. You need to nip all issues in the butt. When I was saying I'm a very confronting person, so whenever something bothers me, I attack it straight away and it's worked so far. It's scared a few people off, but I don't want to work with them if they're scared. Um, keep communication lines open and contracts. They're not for the honeymoon, they're for divorce. So make sure they're signed, sealed and delivered before you go forward. That was a mistake that I learned as well. In terms of equity splits, we didn't have a written contract of who's getting what. So there was a bit of a, it all worked out after, but there was a lot of confrontation there. Offer a sweetener deal, cash or shares in exchange for a full waiver. Um, that full waiver as well is just in terms of them not like non-competes and all that kind of stuff that I'm not going into the legalities of contracts and that kind of stuff, but um, you might want to offer them something like that so they can just like leave you and the brand alone so you can continue with it instead of just letting the whole baby disappear. Oh, you just brought it out of the disclaimer. What's high we up to? If you're an e-commerce store, regain possession of your, if you're a warehouse, regain possession of all your products before you kick them to the curb. You don't want to lose that as well. Um, include a non dispatchment clause. They can't be talking crap about you on Twitter. They can't be on the project saying how bad you were. You just want to make sure that your reputation is safe there. And if you need to, lawyer up. Uh, a lot of cases um, you may be able to get 
business legal aid, they do offer free advice for non-complicated issues, but yeah, just always talk to people before you just give up. Test the waters out before you get in bed with your potential co-founder. You don't want to end up settling for someone that brings nothing to the table. Um, you wouldn't use a fashion icon like Kim Kardashian as a spokesperson for a tech company, would you? Maybe you would, because now she's the head of um, an app company and she's making millions and actually all the sisters just released an app a couple of days ago and they're charging $3.40 for each download a month <laughs> they have a lot of followers so I'm guessing it's going to be about 10 million downloads a month times $3.40 cha -ching! those girls are really smart so let's raise our glass to a long successful marriage and good luck I hope you found your perfect co-founder and with happily ever after in a mountain of riches. But I just want to make it really clear, like you must always stay humble because when you're at the top, you're going to come down one day. And when you're coming down, you don't want those people that you stepped on going up to step on you, essentially. That's all. Do not have any questions for me? Yeah, uh, sorry for my ignorance, but uh, you tell us your story. Which one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Which one? Uh, your story, How? How? You, your startup story. Okay, yeah, cool. So, um, ever since I was 17, I've been working for myself since I was 17. I started up with my younger sister. She was doing, we were doing graphic design business, and we had an office in Auckland Park, so it was just us two. And then a year later, we hired a, a yeah, another guy to come on to do more work. Um, my sister was getting a bit, so her passion fizzled, so that's why it's important to find someone with the same passion as you. Generally the person with the idea has more of the passion than the person that you bring on. So I was doing that with my sister and then we, we incorporated, um, I was in the modelling scene as well, so I was doing modelling for myself, so we incorporated a promotional agency, So and I'm still doing that now, so when I was, yeah, I'm 29 now, so when I was 17 I started doing that. Um, we got into events as well, and I net networked with a couple of people in the music industry, so I was helping doing big events, like um, urban events. And then, what happened next? So, I still have my fingers in all of that, and then um, we closed down the graphic design business. My sister wanted to go get a job in the bank. She was just bored of being on the computer, so she went to a bank. Go figure. And then, <laughs> I love you! <laughs> We're recording, so I just need to <laughs> reinstate that to her. Um, and then we, I went to Malaysia and there was these bobbleheads. And I was like, I love them, I want one. And so I saw a sign on there that said distributors wanted in Australia. So I was like, I have to do it. And I didn't think about it and I just leapt right into it. So I've been doing that as well. So that now we're in 2005 and <coughs> I've still got that now. And I've actually been talking to Mark and Susan about maybe... Um, donating that business to a aspiring entrepreneur in some kind of, I don't know what we're going to figure out yet, for the mini kitten media. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing, so I'm going to be donating that back to the entrepreneur community. Um, so that's that, and then, so I've got the modeling agency happening still, and that's got a modeling academy as well. So that's in Perth, and there's another leg in Sydney, because then I moved to Sydney, that's where I met these guys from Tag Room, so we started doing, it's kind of like a BuzzFeed Junior, um, everyone knows what BuzzFeed is, so we're just like a baby one of them, um, and then last year we sold our company to a New York company, so they took over us, um, we still maintain 20%, so we're still equity partners, so, uh, so that's, yeah, that's where I am now, so I've still got my hands in kind of everything still, but... I'm a full-time mum now, so that's my main focus. Um, like I was saying before, like money comes and goes, but as long as you kind of stay grounded and stay level-headed and humble, I'm, I'm given opportunities every day, and I have to keep saying no to them because I get really excited whenever someone presents me an idea. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm like, no, I don't have time for that. I need to relax. But having said that, my baby's older now. She's nearly ten months, so. 
I can get back into the workforce. And, like I love seeing women in the workforce, as well, in the workforce, in the entrepreneur kind of scene because it's mainly guys. As I'm sure you guys have experienced that as well. But um, making the um, list for the top, I think it's, yeah, top 50 or top 40 entrepreneur, lady entrepreneurs under the age of 40. Um, second year in a row, it's really like boosted the, my confidence in women in the industry, so to speak, I guess. Women can do everything anyway, I always knew that, but it's just reinstated that. Um, but yeah, that's my story. Fantastic. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so when you start the company, do you state your company vision in five years' time and in ten years' time? And, uh, and now, when you look back, do you think you have achieved the vision? Yeah, um, so we, with Tag Room, because um, the other ones I just do them on my own, I hire kind of full-time work and that kind of stuff, but in terms of like co-founders and that kind of stuff, with Tag Room, there's four co-founders, um, and we had always planned to exit in five years, but I think we exited maybe a year early, but we're definitely, we were definitely on track to where we wanted to be. There was a lot of up and downs. We had two two other people that wanted to give us offers um, and luckily we didn't take them because they announced that they went bankrupt <laughs> a couple of months ago but um, yeah so I think with Tag Room definitely we stayed focused focused without all the other dramas with equity and that kind of stuff but yeah, yeah. any other questions? don't be shy